Who do you think was the first person to describe Morton's neuroma? Please comment below. This is part one of my Morton's Neuroma video in order to keep the video short. So make sure to subscribe to my channel and also hit the bell button and then you get automatically notified when the next episode is online. In this video we will answer the initial question about who actually first described Morton's Neuroma and it might not be the one you think it is. But first let's have a look at the basics. Patients with Morton's neuroma describe a localized pain in the forefoot, which is worse on weight bearing. And typically they have a numbness and some tingling feeling in uh, or between the toes. And the classic description is like the patient would be walking on a marble. And you can imagine it's not a very pleasant feeling. The next very important thing you need to know is that Morton neuromas are not true neuromas. This is very important. It's not a true neoplasm in the classical sense, but it's a perineural fibrosis and nerve degeneration on histopathology. Many Morton neuromas are asymptomatic. Across different studies, around one third of all Morton neuromas are asymptomatic. And if they are small, especially below 5 mm, they are less frequently symptomatic. It does not automatically mean that the large ones are symptomatic, but keep that in mind. Also, very important, the size and the morphology of the Morton's neuroma depends on the position you are scanning the patient. If you do a prone exam in a plantar flexed position of the foot, the Morton's neuroma appears larger, and this is up to 2 mm in size, than if you do the same patient in supine position if in a neutral position of the ankle joint. So keep this in mind if you do the exam and I would recommend to do a prone position or plantar flexed position exam. Coming back to my initial question, who do you think first described Morton's neuroma? If I ask like that, it's obviously kind of a trick question. The first name that comes to mind is obviously not Horton, but you might think maybe Dr. Thomas George Morton, who described it in 1876. And that seems to be a valid choice because in many papers, especially in the radiology literature, it is cited that this was the first person to ever describe Morton's neuroma or the pathology of that mass or fibrosis or tumor or whatever they used to believe it was at that location. However, if you go a little bit further or deeper, even on the Wikipedia page, on the English Wikipedia page, you will find the name of Louis Durlacher. And he was a chiropodist working in London and obviously also working with or for the Queen as you can imagine. He described this pathology already in 1845, so a little bit earlier than Dr. Morton actually. But then I have found this other paper and there is this dude. And Filippo Civinini, obviously as the name suggests Italian, observed the pathology already in 1835, so another 10 years earlier than the previous person. So, as you can see on this um, photograph or scan of the paper, he described this in 1835. And this is an image from that publication. It's in Italian and I don't understand everything, but it looks like a foot and these structures might as well reflect some nerves and if we have a look at the location where we would suspect Morton's neuroma we can see here this structure there is a letter E and there is something like lumbo assai grande del fibroso in vulupo del gangliare whatever you, you get what I mean so he probably was the first person to describe Morton's neuroma in 1835. In part 2 we will go through some examples together and also we will have a closer look at the anatomy. So I hope you found this episode interesting and the next time you have a colleague that is reading a Morton's neuroma case you can impress them by saying by the way it was not Dr. Morton who first described Morton's neuroma and you can show them that you pretty much know what you're talking about. <laughs> Fucking eagle double G. Snoop Dogg. You know I'm hopping with the D R E.